this lecture i'll discuss about the intrinsic semiconductor in the next lecture we'll discuss the extrinsic semiconductor so in the previous lecture we discussed the bonding forces in solids that is ionic bonding metallic bonding and covalent bonding and now for us this covalent bonding is important so which will be there in fourth group elements when we are uh, atoms are bringing closer and closer and whenever two electrons are shared in a bond that bond is called covalent bond right and we have seen whole concept whole concept that is whenever the electron is moving from con valence band to the conduction band it will leave empty sp empty state in valence band that empty state is called hole and we have seen how this hole is moving opposite of the electron right now what is an intrinsic semiconductor is it is a perfect semiconductor that is if we if we don't add any impurities that semiconductor is called intrinsic semiconductor that is if i take directly the silicon atom and when you are bringing so many number of silicon atoms together so that is nothing but the intrinsic semiconductor right that is like this a perfect semiconductor crystal with no impurities is called an intrinsic semiconductor now how the in a perfect semiconductor we will make the electrons as a free carriers that we here to see so we'll see the crystal structure of this uh, silic or uh, intrinsic semiconductor at t equal to 0 kelvin that is 0 degree kelvin now if i see every silicon atom is surrounded by four silicon atoms see if i see the middle one this is a plus 4 is indicating the the valence electrons are four so for that valence electron there should be some positive charge in the nucleus that is only it is saying then to compensate this uh, plus 4 positive charge there should be negative charge surrounding it so the those negative charges are we can say electrons four electrons are in valence electrons we can say these well these electrons are called valence electrons and whenever this uh, silicon atom is neighboring with the one more silicon atom with the one electron sharing so see in this bond this is a one bond in this bond two electrons are shared so that bond is called covalent bond now it is at t equal to 0 kelvin and if we see energy band diagram this is conduction band this is valence band valence band is a fill, fully filled states here there is no free carriers in this conduction band at t equal to 0 kelvin so so this is the uh, what you call intrinsic semiconductor crystal structure at t equal to 0 kelvin that is there is no free carriers there is no free carriers to conduct to conduct a current that is at t equal to temperature 0 kelvin intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor semiconductor is like an insulator this is important so whenever there is no free carriers no conduction is possible right so that is at t equal to 0 kelvin now if we raise temperature what will happen we know that if it is a silicon the energy gap is 1 at t equal to 0 kelvin 1.21 electron volt yes or no and at uh, 300 degree kelvin 1.1 electron volt now if we give this energy this electron will move from valence band to the conduction band if it is a, a germanium we have to give 0.78 electron volt so this is the crystal structure at 300 degree kelvin or we can say at room temperature now when we slowly increase the temperature the valence electrons gain some thermal energy and they will break the covalent bond so here i am showing only one covalent bond is breaking so whenever the covalent bond breaks see it will the electrons will goes to the lattice or we can say free space so that will become as a free electron and it will leave behind a empty space or we can say empty state so this empty state is called hole right that is for every covalent bond breaking there is a one free electron and one hole that is by giving or by raising the temperature by giving the thermal energy we are generating electron hole pair right this word is important electron hole pair right so by giving thermal energy we are generating electron hole pair right this is the energy band diagram of uh, this intrinsic semiconductor at 300 degree kelvin that is every covalent bond breaking there is a electron hole pair suppose we assume that five 
covalent bonds are broken so five uh, free electrons and five holes are there see equal amount of electrons and holes so these are we can say five electron hole pair if 10 to the power 20 covalent bonds are broken so we'll get 10 to the power 20 electrons 10 to the power 20 holes yes or no so that is the reason at at t, t equal to 300 degree kelvin we will have the electrons concentration electron concentration is equal to hole concentration if we give some name the electrons concentration generally we use as n and hole concentration as p so these two will be equal so this will be equal to the intrinsic concentration intrinsic carrier concentration the name we will give as ni so that is at room temperature the intrinsic carrier concentration is nothing but electron concentration or hole concentration right this is important uh, equation so ni is a intrinsic carrier concentration is equal to electron concentration is equal to hole concentration now there is a one more concept that is whenever these electron hole pairs are generated right there may be recombination of this electron hole pair that is so after some time this electron will come and sit in this empty state that com recombination is possible either direct or indirect so that we have seen when we see direct band gap semiconductors and indirect band gap semiconductors so when an electron is con uh, in conduction band falling to the valence band so it will radiate the energy or we can say it will dissipate the energy in form of heat right so whenever it is falling and it is uh, occupying this empty state this electron hole pair will be uh, disappear right so how many number of electron hole pairs are generated there is a possibility of all electron hole pairs are disappears also so but we can say recombination rate is approximately equal to the generation rate right but if we say steady state at steady state so we will contain the intrinsic carrier concentration that is there is a some steady state so that when that steady state happened so we'll get some intrinsic carrier concentration so that intrinsic carrier concentration the order of is 10 to the power 10 10 to the power 15 10 to the power 13 etc only that range will get that is the range is 10 to the power 13 per centimeter cube or 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube or we can say sometimes 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube that is this number of electrons or this, this number of holes present in this uh, intrinsic semiconductor right so this is very small compared to this uh, in extrinsic semiconductor so that's why the conduct conductivity or we can say the cu uh, current is very small in this intrinsic semiconductor which is not sufficient to drive the electronic devices so that is the reason we go for the extrinsic semiconductor so there will be this concentration and we will add some impurities to make more concentration electron concentration or hole concentration right so that is about this uh, intrinsic uh, semiconductor so we have to remember is at t equal to 0 kelvin this intrinsic semiconductor will behave like a an insulator whenever we raise the temperature covalent bonds will be broken then it will generate as electron hole pair right so whenever this electron hole pairs are generated there is a possibility of recombination but at a steady state there is an electronic concentration or intrinsic carrier concentration or the order of like this 10 to the power 13 or 10 to the power 15 or 10 to the power 10 etc now we know that how whenever there is a free electrons the conductivity is possible and in the valence band also so this electron is try to occupy this uh, vacant space and, and so on so there is a hole momentum and electron moment so conduction is possible at t equal to 300 degree kelvin 